Hey, we're, we're live. Hey, everybody. We are just uh, getting used to live on YouTube and what our camera can see and can't see. So hopefully you only see the uh, pretty stuff behind us and nothing like crazy. Let's bring this down a little bit. How's that? So you don't, you're not looking at the uh, light fixture. So welcome to the Dog Nerd Show, where we geek out over our best friends. I'm Megan. And I'm Michael. And this is a show about all things dog live. Live. Yes. And if you're watching us, you are seeing our newest family member. Yeah. Look at that little face. So, of course, y'all know Dansby. Dansby's just kind of poking poking below the poking below the screen the the camera there. So this is Dansby's new sister and she is a border terrier. So we and she I think she's like Riley. I think she sees herself and she's <laughs> watching herself. <laughs> We've always said that you can adopt a purebred dog and um honestly if I'm going to be completely truthful I don't I, I didn't know that I would be able to adopt a Border Terrier very easily. Um, as you guys know, we've talked about Border Terriers and how they aren't very common in the U.S., uh, very common in the U.K. where they yep. come from. But I thought eventually we would, but, you know, didn't, didn't, I don't know. I thought it would be pretty difficult. Unfortunately, the reason it wasn't so difficult is that they – have grown in popularity in the United States. And um, I, I got the feeling that they were getting more popular when I would see that some people online would say how easy it was to get a Border Terrier from a certain breeder. And not one in particular, but you know, certain breeders like try this one and try this one because they always have puppies and um, it's, you know, there's no wait lists and all that stuff. And um, the thing is, is um, I'm not making any comments about any of those breeders, um, but uh, generally with a well-bred border terrier, you're going to be on a wait list. Mm -hmm. um, they typically don't have tons of puppies. Now, Finley was one of eight, which was a big litter, uh, but Riley was one of three. So, you know, they're, they're small terriers, so they're, they're not having huge litters generally. So, um, you know, Basically, I was like, okay, the fact that they're they're easier to come by means there's probably some backyard breeders out there, people that are churning out lots of dogs, not just like your, you know, your reputable breeder that's got the dogs living in the house with them and, you know, is breeding, you know, a dog once mm -hmm. a year. I, I don't even know how many times. Yeah. Yeah. So all of that said, um, I started looking because I knew we said we always wanted another border terrier. And quite frankly, both of us would have been fine with just Dansby, mm -hmm. but Dansby loves other dogs and he's super playful. So oh, he, he is an incredible dog lover. Yes. So he's a dog. He nerd might too. actually be our dog nerd. Yeah, exactly. So when we realized how much like Dansby loves dogs so much that um, when, when we're in the office together and he's working with me and his work is peering out the window and letting me know when somebody walked by, um, there, the dog across the street is a Frenchie named Kobe. And when Dansby was up there one day, he barked at, you know, some pedestrians and stuff. And then I heard him just whining and crying, like, like just something I hadn't heard before. And I looked out the window and there was Kobe being walked. So we're like, oh man, you know, he really, I think he really loves Kobe because some of the dogs he barks at, but um, we really thought, okay, you know what? This guy wants another dog. And so we started looking or I started yeah. looking. Yeah, she started looking. And that's when the adventure began. Um, so I started looking at petfinder.com where a lot of the rescue groups post their rescues. And, um, you know, I would see border terrier mixes, which we were not um, opposed to. Um, 
but they were always in like California or Arizona. And actually before Riley passed, there was a border terrier that ended up not with the border terrier uh, welfare group, but with a, a third part, you know, with another rescue group. Um, but they were only going to adopt her out within like 50 miles of their location. And it was like either Washington or Oregon. I can't remember which. Right. So that was a no-go for us. Um, about three, we, I had applied for the National Border Terrier Welfare, um, you know, for one of their rescues when those come in. Typically, a breeder will take back its own dog if for whatever reason you cannot keep it. Um, but sometimes I think some of these backyard breeders or puppy millers end up, um, you know, just not having that as a stipulation. So those dogs yeah. will end up in this, you know, in the shelter system. So that's where national border terrier welfare comes in. And I applied for them, you know, through them. Um, and three weeks after we got Dansby, they contacted me about, I think it was a brother and a sister, three years old in North Carolina, not far from Georgia. And I was like, oh my gosh, we just adopted Dansby. And as you guys know, Dansby had, he came with his own issues and it was not the right time. And we didn't feel like bringing in a pair of bonded siblings would really work anyway. We kind of thought, okay, just one more dog, not two. So Dansby, I told him he got lucky because if they had contacted us three weeks earlier, we mm. probably would have ended up with two border, two terriers, border terriers instead yes. of a Dansby. So, um, and I'm I'm glad that we got Dansby because he's super special. Oh, he is, yeah. So when that didn't work out, I was like, you know, we're just not going to be able to find a Border Terrier. So I kept perusing Pet Finder, kind of like how you're always looking at cars. Mm -hmm. I was constantly looking at Pet Finder. And, you know, like I said, most of these dogs were not close by that I found. Um, ended up finding a... Definitely looked purebred border terrier in New York and on Long Island. Yeah. And I found out that they did adopt out of state. So I applied and waited and waited. And in the meantime, in one of my border terrier Facebook groups, we found out that there were seven dogs up for auction, which what that means is these dogs were puppy mill dogs. So they were purchased and used to breed um, to sell puppies <clears throat> to people. Yeah. Um, so a puppy mill is a commercial dog breeding operation, which is probably where some of these easy to come by um, dogs come from. I'm, disclaimer, I'm not saying that about all of them. I don't know the story, um, but we do know where she came from. Um, and that's where this little one came from. So fat, spoiler alert, I guess I just gave that away, but I was like, okay, puppy mills and ending puppy mills is one of my dreams. Yep. One of my big soapbox issues. And there's a border terrier. There, there actually were seven that were going up for auction and shout out to all of the border terrier people out there that we're trying to figure out how we could get these dogs into homes that no border terriers understand them and are good active homes for them. So, uh, gosh, I think, I think the lady's name, and I hope I don't get this wrong. I think it's Susan Young. I'm sorry if I, I have the name wrong, but she was, um, uh, she was like a tenacious terrier herself trying mm -hmm. to figure out where, these how we could get to these dogs because she was in Ohio the auction was in Missouri and it was literally like that weekend and I think it was like a Wednesday and here I am in Georgia going oh my gosh I can't do anything so I was reaching out to people that I knew um, did rescue in those areas and didn't hear back from anyone so I was like okay well you know here we are so um kept kind of watching out for things was looking on pet finder was hoping that they would appear and then um, I don't know if it was that same woman or somebody else, but they found out that a rescue in Nebraska ended up with four of the border terriers. Um, so one male, three females. And um, I was like, OK, that's good. Now, let me see if I can figure out the rescue group. So, you know, I was trying to figure out the rescue group. And again, 
somebody better than me found that that um, wagon train in Nebraska ended up with one male and three females um, from the dog auction. So that meant, Megan said to Michael one night, hey, so there's these dogs from a puppy mill that, you know, are border terriers. Oh, great. Yeah. Should I, should I apply for them? Yeah, you should apply. Okay, but, you know, they're in Nebraska. Oh. <laughs> You mean like the state? Yeah. And if we, they will adopt out of state, but of course we would need to take Dansby to see if it would even be a match because Dansby's our priority. So we can't bring in a dog that doesn't like Dansby. So, so you want to take Dansby on an airplane? I don't know if he's going to do well on an airplane. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't like people. So Atlanta airport, the busiest airport in the world and being on a metal box with a bunch of people might be a little bit, stressful for him so so drive to nebraska uh -huh. yeah okay let's go <laughs> yep so um so we never heard anything about the long island dog um you know we we just were like we prayed about what to do are we absolutely crazy i mean we are dog yeah, nerds so let's drive into nebraska and i even had somebody say to me well you know there's plenty of dogs in georgia that need adopting and yes, yes, in fact, there are. There's dogs everywhere, unfortunately, in the United States that need adopting a lot in the South. Um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of them are, are big dogs, and Dansby's a little bit skittish with big dogs. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He would probably do okay with the right one. Um, but, you know, we know Border Terriers, and we felt like, as, as important as, you know, bringing light to puppy mills is to me and as important as border terriers are to me, this was kind of like a godsend. So we uh, packed up and we headed. drove to Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. And I'm going to let Michael take over because I think Dansby would like to get down right now. So yeah, I think, I think I'm going to pop off real quick. I think uh, she wants to take off too. So Oh, um, you can come back and get her. Yeah. Yes. So, so here we are. We've loaded up the car and we're going to go to Nebraska, which is about 15 hours from our house uh, with a dog who's never traveled that far. Uh, the furthest he's traveled is to North Georgia and back. Um, and uh, so, so our crazy butts take off. We, we did do one stop. We stopped in Missouri um, at a very nice place. And uh, I'm going to let you take her, too. Okay. Mainly because... She's heavy. Yeah, she's heavy. <laughs> there she is. You can see her body. She actually... Oh, I, they can't hear me. But. No. <laughs> so so um, we, we stopped in Missouri at a hotel and... and we did well there and, and we drive the next day all the way from Columbia, Missouri to Omaha, Nebraska. And we meet these two wonderful ladies. Um, yeah. So just to pause, they said, you know, when they said that we were approved, you know, went through the process, had the um, our references were called, our vets were called and we did a virtual home visit. So, you know, via yeah. FaceTime. And we found out we were approved and that there were two females that they were thinking of for us. Yep. The, the one male was, um, I think, was the one that went to a gentleman that had previously adopted from them and had recently lost a border as well. So we were like, if we're coming all the way from Georgia, we would like to meet both, right. both dogs and see uh, how Dansby does. And we didn't know that um, the, the two dogs were related. Uh, one was a mother and the other one was a daughter. And so a six year old and a two and a half year old. Correct. So we, we went to the two and a half year old's foster mom's house first. And, and she's called strawberry and the older one was Velma. Correct. And so we, we, uh, we get there and, and, you know, do the introductions and, then we set the two dogs outside and it was like they were lifelong friends almost immediately. And it was like, wow, they're having a blast together. 
And we'll, we'll share a YouTube short of some video footage of them running and playing. But yeah, I mean, it was almost immediate with them yeah. where they just took off and started chasing each other around the foster mom's yard. Right. Um, but just to be fair, um, you know, we said, you know, thanks for letting us into your home. And, and well, let me just say, the, so Strawberry, um, the other thing with her is that she's uh, pretty shy. Mm -hmm. And so like she was great with Dansby, but with us, you know, definitely crouching down and cowering, but wagging her tail, but nervous and, and just really shy. In fact, I thought she was much shorter in the leg than a standard border terrier because she crouched so much. Right. You know, was it because she was in a crate that was too small? Was it because she was shy or was she just shorter leg? So, but she did great with Dansby and she really warmed up to Michael. I mean, let us both pet her on the chest, but she and Michael had a moment. <laughs> um, so we were like, okay, that went well. So let's go meet Velma. Yeah. So, so we went over to meet Velma and Velma is a very confident uh, young dog. And you would never think that she was in a puppy mill. I no, mean, she, very. She walked right out and was like, hello world. Here I am. And, and. Walked right up, did great with us, but she kind of just didn't have the patience for a dog like Dansby with as much uh, energy as he has. She growled at him a couple of times just to, just to not, you know. A, a just crazy. to let him know who's boss. Yeah. Basically. And what was interesting was that Dansby really did not, like Dansby can be a lot. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like he's a bit much sometimes for, you know, people and other dogs. He he got the picture with her and didn't even try to play with her or anything. Yeah. Um, so the foster mom was like, let's give it a little more time. Let's bring out one of my dogs and let's see if, you know, what happens. And she continued to growl at him and he was like, okay, like, you know, yeah. I'm going to just not get near you. And before all this, we had, we had talked to the foster moms and we said, Hey, you know, we really want to let the dogs make the decision here. Yeah. We, we really want them. We'll know, and the, because they'll know. And uh, the the foster mom of Velma, who's also a trainer. Yeah, she said, "Well, you said you wanted the dogs to make a decision. I think a decision's been made." And so we went back over to Strawberry's house that evening, um, and uh, she was having family over and everything else. So we were yeah. able to get all the paperwork done and. Right before her family arrived, yeah. as they were arriving. Actually, they showed up and took some photos. The photo in the thumbnail. In the thumbnail is the photo. Our first family photo. With, yeah. With Strawberry. So. So so we uh, we turned around and we were we were gonna stay in Nebraska that night, but we were gonna stay in Omaha, but it was still the sun was still out, and we kind of figured that trying to handle two dogs in a hotel in hotel rooms for multiple nights might be more than yeah we, like it might be better to just like do it one night do it one night you know get get some rest and get some road under our tires and so we ended up going back to Columbia the same, Missouri, yeah the, the same, same hotel in the same room so we didn't have it reserved so um, we had packed up brought all of our stuff with brought us brought everything with us. And we roll back in that night and they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. You were here with us last night. And I'm like, yeah. And so it was the exact same room, exact same hotel. Which even though we didn't get to see Omaha, I think the thing is that you realize when you're traveling with dogs like that, we wouldn't have been able to see a whole bunch anyway, because we had dogs in tow. So, you know, it's not like we were going to go have a nice dinner somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. We uh, will have to come back sometime to actually see it. But, um, we, and, and you know, you don't leave your dog in a hotel room by itself. Um, if we had maybe VRBO'd it, that might have been a better option. So uh, we made it back to Columbia. The dogs had a blast running around. It was like a sweet hotel. So there was a, a family room hallway uh, with the bathroom and then the, the bedroom. And they just tore around. They were running around the ottoman over and over again, which was great because they wore themselves out and they slept really well. Other than when he went up to go to the bathroom, um, Strawberry woke up and started barking loudly. She, As we've told you, borders she bark to, loud. She had to go outside and, and do her business and, and probably was hungry too. 
So we did all that. Um, we drove for about 10 hours the next day, which was Sunday. And they slept like champs because again, in the morning they played and ran and ran. And I've never seen Dansby run so fast, you know, that traction on that low pile carpeting. Um, so they had a blast together. They slept the entire way home. You know, we would get out, go to the bathroom, let them out. Um, you know, all of it, they did great. And we, we, we got home Sunday night. Um, so we, we, and they probably got too much sleep because, Sunday night, they weren't real tired and we were about dead tired. Yeah. So we were a little bit sleep deprived right now, but, um, but yeah, we're catching up, but that's the one thing too. Um, you know, I know this is about adopting and stuff, but when you're traveling with your, your pets, uh, your dogs, it's, it's good to get them out and let them get some energy going, especially if you're going for a long, long distance, I would say over two or three hours, I would definitely stop at least at least once oh, and you're give, them, to, give yeah. them a break and let them let them walk around and get some energy out now i will say uh, two things the the hotel we stayed at can i say the name yeah drury inn uh was where we stayed in columbia incredible hotel great great staff very friendly um they even had an so area clean and like yeah, new and they had an area where you could take your dog and and they had little you know little disp- bags. dispensers for pickup bags and it was really nice uh and then the other thing that uh and i'm sorry i probably forgot what i was going to say as well but uh, the other thing we're going to say anything about the truck stops that have little dog runs well that was, <laughs> that's exactly what i was going to say so the there's several truck stops. I think it was a Flying J. And a Huck. A Huck. No, it was Huck. It was Huck. And there was another one. I can't remember. And I think Huck's, pilot or... I think Huck's is owned by Pilot. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, they had dog parks. Like little, little, little miniature dog parks where, mm-hmm. you know, you would just let your dogs in and let them run and go to the bathroom. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. So when you're cruising down the road and you're planning your trip, you might want to look and see what some of the amenities are at uh, rest stops, uh, because we stopped at several of those. Um, and then uh, truck, stops. truck stops or gas stations that, because one of the things that is an unfortunate part about our world is, um, you know, people with, you know, throwing trash out, cigarette butts, things like that. You got to be extremely careful when you let um, your dogs out because, there's some dangerous things they can get a hold of. Yeah. So we'll we'll do a whole episode on that. But let's go. Yeah, back. we need to do a whole episode yeah, on traveling with we dogs. Because we just did it. And yeah. We'll give you lots of good tips. It's fresh. So let's give you a little bit more information about strawberry. So um we we were trying to decide on a name because we weren't sure that we were gonna keep strawberry or not. And so just keep listening and we'll let you know how that went. But what I want to tell you is that when she went to auction, she didn't have a name. She had a number. So they're just treated like a commodity, right? Like so, cattle. Like cattle. So she had this little piece of twine tied around her neck, and she had a number, and her number was 247, and that's, that's that. That's what these people think of these dogs. Um, yeah, know, it, they, they don't see them. It kind of hits you a little bit when you see that. Yeah. Yeah. So she was, you know, she was in a great with a number. And, uh, I do want to talk about kind of how this all happens. So puppy Miller, when they're done with their dogs, um, some of them will kill them. Some of them will kill them. Not very humanely. Um, and then some of them will contact a rescue group. Um, there are rescue groups like national mill dog rescue that works with these puppy millers and says, we will take your dogs when you're done with them because we don't want them to go back into the system. So that's what happens with these dog auctions. And it's kind of a double-edged sword. I'm going to be honest because what happens is like rescue groups will go in and they will bid on the dogs in auction and get them right. So 
The reason it's a double-edged sword is because that puppy miller did get the money from the auction. So they did make money on Strawberry and the rest of those dogs. However, those dogs didn't go to another puppy miller. They right. got out of the system. They got spayed and neutered and they will never have puppies ever again. And they will be able to live a happy life in a family. So um, it's not ideal because we don't want puppy millers to make any money. We want them to stop doing it and find a better way to make money um, without hurting these precious creatures. So I do understand it's controversial. It's controversial to me too, in my own heart, but um, the way we look at it as these dogs are out of the system, they're no longer going to live these horrible lives. These rescue groups, they vet you. Um, they make sure that this dog is going to be the right match for its family. Somebody chewing on something. Probably so. Let me check. Um, so it's definitely something that um, these dogs end up in a much, much better situation. So that's, I just wanted to be transparent about, that's what a dog auction is. So like Michael said, I think one of them was chewing on his chair. Um, like Michael said, that's, um, that's kind of where, where this all goes. So um, now for the name part of it. Let's get to the good stuff. Yeah. So um, we, we, we didn't think we would keep Strawberry just because, I don't know, it's a cute name. Um, it's just, yeah, it's a cute name, but it's not. Well, and Dansby is named after a baseball player. And somebody was like, oh, like Daryl Strawberry. And I'm like, oh, gosh, no, we can't have a Daryl Strawberry dog. Mainly because I would just be standing there going, Daryl, <laughs> Daryl. So I, I don't remember all the places he played for, but he played for the Mets, right? Did he also the play Met, for the Dodgers? I think so, but the Mets was the he big was, one. Yeah, he was part of the. We were playing them, and yeah, you know, it was a big deal. So, anyway, yeah, Dansby is named after Dansby Swanson from the Atlanta Braves, and we went through Braves names, and we were having like, okay, there. We already had used Riley, not because of Austin Riley. We used Riley before Austin Riley was even a Brave. Um, but that was the only other name that would have worked other than. So there's a phenom that came on the scene who, uh, has the most incredible stash of all of baseball, maybe since Goose Gosnitz. I'm not sure if it, it doesn't live up to that level because that's, that's legendary. I, but See, I was thinking Raleigh Fingers. Or, oh, Raleigh Fingers is another one. Yeah. But we have a guy, and his name we could is... We have called her right, Raleigh. That would have been too close to Riley. Yeah, we yeah. have gotten confused. <laughs> so, Sorry. So we have a guy on our team that just throws heat, and we decided that we were going to name her after a guy named Strider. So Spencer Strider is his name. And that's been on the list because we we came up with this name before we even got her. We were like, if we have another Border Terrier, Strider would be a good name. And then we were, as we were driving there, I had made a list of names because like Michael, other than looking at Pet Finder, then once I knew we were potentially getting a dog, I was creating a list of names, going through the baby name books, looking up Scottish names, all that stuff. And with girl names, I think it's tricky. And there's a lot that I like that are so popular. It's like every dog has that name. Mm -hmm. And so we had narrowed down our list and we kept coming back to Strider. And we were like, is it too much of a boy's name or does it work for a girl? And y'all, we took our first walk with her. And that was yesterday. And so remember, this is a dog that she's about two and a half years old. I don't know if we said that. So luckily she's hasn't lived an immense amount of time in a cage in a puppy mill, but it does look like, I should say, it does look like she had puppies because her, her nipples are a little bit larger and her skin around her abdomen is a little bit loose. Um, but we took her for her first walk and, you know, she was kind of crouching low and going slow, but you know, she would see Dansby walking confidently and, and, you know, we would tell her she's a good girl and she started, she started going, she started going, and then she hit her stride. 
And when she hit her stride and was confident, this was on the way back. Yeah. You know, we went down and did a little, you know, a little pathway, probably about a quarter of a mile. Maybe. Yeah, it's not very long. When we turned around and came back, she hit her stride. And that girl has such a beautiful gait and stride. When she is confident and she's feeling, she, her legs obviously are longer than I thought they originally were. Um, her tail is straight out. She's just, she was just a sight to behold. And yeah. we did get some video of that. So we'll have to share that. I think that's why we kept coming back to Strider. So I know it's probably everyone's going to be the most, for a boy. But yeah, it's not the most feminine name, but it just fits. Yeah, yeah. Fits. So Dansby and Strider, that's our pack. We'll probably be changing Dansby's Instagram to Dansby and Strider. So uh, we'll have to introduce her there. But we wanted you guys to be the first to see her and to know about her. And um, yeah, there that's, we go. I think that's all I've got. Um, thank you so much for watching and tuning in, listening to us. Um, yeah. We'd love to know your questions. Any questions you have for us about the process? Put them down in the comments. Yeah, put them in the comments. If you're listening on our podcast, just uh, email us, a dognerdshow at gmail.com. Oh, and remember, if you would like a limited edition dog nerd, official dog nerd sticker, just email us, dognerdshow at gmail.com. Send us your address and we'll put a stamp on an envelope and send you one of these. Um, but yeah, you can find us everywhere on social media at dog nerd show. And then if you're looking for some dog related gear, head over to Etsy. Yeah, there's a border terrier hat. Um, head over to Etsy, which is etsy.com slash shop slash hound and thistle. And you can find our stuff there. Oh, and oh yeah. Uh, and give us a thumbs up. Yes. And, and if you wouldn't we mind, want the algorithm to love us. So yeah. the thumbs up, the comment and subscribe. Yeah. And when you subscribe, if you hit that notification bell, it'll let you know when we have a new video coming out or when we go live. Yes, absolutely. Oh, and one last thing. Um, Riley Carson is where you can find my books. If you thought it was interesting learning about this today, I think you will really enjoy Riley Carson in the Cherokee caves. That's all I'm saying without giving any spoilers. Um, but my mission is to make the world a better place for dogs. That's why we do this show. That's why I write my books and, um, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. All so right. For now, guys. Bye. Bye.